Hello everybody, welcome to Marketing Analytics course. This is Dr. Shagadu Chatterjee from Vijisom IIT Kharagpur. who is taking this course for you. We are starting week 7, session 1 and in week 7 we will discuss about recommendation engine and retail analytics. So, this is our topic. So, majorly we have in the next couple of weeks we will talk about what kind of problems that we face in retail and we I will uh, at least for the first two weeks uh, means week 7 and week 8 I will majorly focus on e-commerce. Now, why e-commerce? E-commerce is something that is coming up in, 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 in the whole world actually in a quite a big way. So, internet is available with um, pretty much many people and, and let us say this Jio is giving this much offer and the other uh, other like Vodafone, Airtel all are giving various offers in internet. And internet is becoming cheap at our time when, when let us say around 10 years back when uh, we were uh, youngsters our the internet was not very much available and the cost of having internet in your mobile phone was very high. But now internet has become cheap and people who are in rural areas also can also access internet because availability of internet is also there it means the, the connection is also good. Giving that as the background there are lots of e-commerce firm that has come up. So, uh, Flipkart, Amazon are there in India probably other uh, uh, in, in the in the B2B sector also there are Alibaba and let us say there is uh, Black Buck and there are various kinds of aggregator farms that is coming up. And then also there are aggregator firms who, who works as a platform. For example, they are actually connecting the customer requirements and the uh, I would say the, the, the service provider firms, they are creating a, a, a platform where these two people can come together. So, those kind of platforms are also coming up and they are giving services in urban areas, semi-urban areas, rural areas. So, in short, e-commerce is becoming an important aspect of retail business. Still in India, I would say that majorly Indian retail is unorganized, probably majorly the whole world's retail is unorganized. A very small part of that is organized and again very smaller part of that is e-commerce, but the growth rate of e-commerce is pretty high. So, though it is still in terms of size probably not significant if we compare with the total retail industry, the growth rate is something which is very much higher for e-commerce firms. Given that as a background, we have to focus on how marketing analytics can help retail firms as well and to be specific e-commerce firms because that is where the application is pretty high. Now, why a recommendation engine is something that I will discuss now. So, here you will see in this particular slide, you will see that uh, th there is something called uh, you have you you can sell deep sell deep means getting the first initial sales is pretty easy but monetize the long tail with surprising recommendations is something that is this particular picture saying it is saying that up to that up to this line this is easy to get no issues but after that whatever sales happen in this area which is the minute sales or which is the incremental sales but that is a long tail is there means you can do incremental sales, incremental sales slowly, slowly as much as possible and as that incrementation can go up to infinite, you can actually sell, upsell or cross sell little, little products. When you do it in a large scale, that contributes to your revenue in a very huge matter. So, if I let us say all this recommendation engine and etc is incremental sales. For example, if I go to an e-commerce firm. In a, in a website, I have, I will have something in my mind to buy. Let us say I want to buy a mobile phone. I have, I will probably do all this uh, advertise, I, I will, I have already talked with my friends, I have talked with other people who has idea about uh, mobile phones, I have searched in websites and in, in, in online media and etc. And then I have created a consideration set. Now, with that consideration set, I have let us say probably I have done a little bit more analysis and created a choice set. Now, I want to make a choice. So, when I go to the e-commerce firm's website, I want to buy something with very high probability whatever I have planned for, I will buy that. But if some recommendations come, I might probably switch from whatever I wanted to buy to whatever these guys are recommending. So, a little bit or probably I will buy an extra item. For example, let us say somebody you are buying a mobile phone, they give a recommendation for 
the cover, a uh, supportive cover for that mobile phone, a protective cover for that mobile phone. Now, you might not have an idea that okay, you will buy that. You want to buy a mobile phone. But because that particular thing was recommended and that was a very small price in comparison to the mobile phone's price and you thought that okay, I will buy that. And when you thought that okay, I will buy that, you bought that and that is a cross selling that happened. Now, this cross selling is an incremental sales that does not contribute towards the majority of your sale volume. The, 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 but that incremental sale, let us say there are uh, 10 million mobile phones are being sold in a, in a particular year and out of those 10 million, 10 percent guys actually do a cross. So, 90 percent case it is a failure, only 10 percent case that recommendation leads to some successful conversion. 10 percent is a very big number, it does probably does not happen in that way. But even if it is 10 percent, then 1 million cases are sold and each case is let us say 500 rupees. So, 1 million into 500 rupees, you are getting 500 million extra revenue. From pro probably if you have not done that, probably most of the people will not buy. You will say that how many people if you go and check your friends and how many people actually buy a supportive case? Not even 10 percent probably, probably less than that. But this recommendation might push a little bit up. So, that is something that we are trying to see that how I can capture the long tail. So, recommendations for you can be the coupons, recommendations for you can be the phone case as it is told, it can be uh, recommendations for you can be uh, whether you want to connect with other people or not. So, there are various types of recommendations that comes and these recommendations creates a aha feeling, it is a surprise that comes into your mind. That aha feeling is something that is important. And we are living the age of information and entering the age of recommendations. So, Chris Anderson in the long tail he told that recommendation lot works lot. So, often times we actually want recommendation from a legitimate source of information. But sometimes even if the information is not legitimate in terms of you do not know who is recommending it, it is the platform that is recommending you, you still probably uh, would like to have a little bit of positive association towards this recommendation. Because without recommendation, without any suggestion to you, your chances of buying is much lower than with recommendation irrespective of from whom this recommendation is coming. For example, let us say you are walking in the road, you are hungry, you want to have some food. One thing is that let us say you ask somebody, so why will I get a good food, anything, any good fresh food. Whatever he says, even if you do not know that person, you might probably whatever he says, you will have a positive association towards that particular thing. Let us say he says that, okay, go to that restaurant, it is good, I know. So, the moment he says that, even if you do not know the person, you might say that, okay, why will he give a bad recommendation to me? He does not know me, I does not know him. So, uh, I do not know him, so th that will not create a problem. So, I do not think that he is uh, recommending to create a harm to me. So, in general, we trust recommenders. So, based on that, I am saying that the moment a simple nudge, a small recommendation comes up, your chances of buying goes up and that is why recommendation engine is important. So, there are search in, in so there are two types of products. So, customer, so this is something that we see. So, customers who have bought this item has also bought these items and, and, and it is a, it's a, a special case of uh, in, the, in a brick and mortar retail store, but in brick and mortar retail store actually it is not written like this. In brick and mortar retail store also recommendation engine works, but there they just put the product. For example, you will see that just beside utensils or just beside uh, crockeries, the, uh, there will be a scotch bite or the, the powder, washing powder, uh, this washing powder will be there just beside the crockeries. Because it is often be the case that when you are purchasing this, you might have in your mind that okay, I might have to wash these dishes as well. And then they create a special kind of dishwasher, dishwashing soap and etcetera, which is required for specialized some kind of crockery. So, some for, so you might have a feeling that okay, for my crockery which is of high value, I should buy a liquid, uh, liquid uh, dishwashing uh, soap rather than a solid cake kind of soap, because we have a perception that cake kind of soap is probably not for high quality good crockery, it might create a damage, it is uh, there is too much of uh, uh, pH content high or low or whatever 
and then then that will probably create a corrosion on my utensils and etc so that kind of feelings might come and that's why you might probably prefer a liquid uh, thing that will be good to your hand also because you uh, or whoever is dishwashing and and it will be good for the crockery is also so those kind of feelings are there and that before because those kind of feelings are there people actually put those uh, items beside the crockery items so in natural cases user search items so you find out the user and you see that what kind of items are good for him and in case of recommendations you find out the items and you suggest that the the items are suggested to the users rather than users are searching the items so this is something that is also coming up very commonly in both in e-commerce mainly in e-commerce but also in 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 smaller uh, in in brick and mortar retail farms as well now going ahead uh, these are some of the examples for example uh, frequently bought together so uh, these are the two books for example book 1 and book 2 these two books are frequently bought together so this kind of suggestions comes up in amazon a customer who bought this item also bought these items so customer who bought this first book which so this is the page of this first book and that's why the other book is being tagged along and they will also buy these books as well so these books are also there so uh, because they know that okay this guy is searching for data mining books and there are lots of the other data mining books so those will also come in the uh, recommendation of amazon so this is one type of recommendations another kind of recommendation is more personalized so amazon is a personalized opening online store where let's say introduction to data mining is what you are saying what other items do customers buy after viewing these items so see they are different these two are bought together these two are when some of item one is bought the second item is also bought and here when one item is seen second item is bought so the recommendations also when you create this recommendation you can have different kinds of recommendation one is that both items should be in the same basket second is both items in past history might be in different baskets but both item has to be bought so you buy apple and you buy orange you buy apple and orange together that is the first case this case you buy apple and orange differently but in a, in a time period in seven days time period you buy in different trips you buy but you buy them both apple and orange this is your case and you have seen apple but bought orange you have contemplated that or you have you have you have de delegated with yourself that okay this apple and this orange i have seen it but then i bought orange that is this case so different kind of purchase situation in a customer journey there can be different kind of situations where this will work so this is probably applicable when you are and uh, you are let's say in a, in a information search stage in your part customer journey on the other hand this is applicable when you are in you are actually the purchasing you are actually making the purchase and this is post purchase customers who bought this item also bought is a post purchase situation so you have bought it you got to the probably it will be more applicable when you went to the uh, purchase you got the purchase order number and etc payment successful that particular page and then it comes in the below that okay you have purchased this but now there are lots of customers who already purchased this also buys this probably also it can come when you open up your uh, amazon you say that okay so this is the last purchase that you have made then people who have bought this products also have bought this kind of products so that is also one kind of recommendation engine so different kinds of recommendation engines can be created in terms of when the recommendation is coming so based on that the back count back end calculations might be a little bit different different in terms of what source of data you are taking if you are taking this thing then you have to also consider what customers are seeing customer viewing data has also should also be collected because customers who have seen this then they all they bought this one so customer viewing data and their customer buying data has to be matched on the other hand in this case only customer basket data in the same basket will be matched two different baskets will not be matched so you bought uh, product a and product b in the same basket then only it is one otherwise zero but here product a and product b can be bought in different baskets but both has to be bought not viewed both has to be bought then only one so the the the, the first hand calculations the the initial 
I would say contributing data set, the, uh, the, the primary raw data set will be different in these three different cases, but more or less the algorithm will remain same. Going ahead, what is the recommender problem? A good recommender is which shows show programming titles to a software engineer and baby toys to a new mother. In other words, there has to be a fit. Whatever you are recommending, the customer's requirements and your recommendation should have good fit. You will not show a programming title means that means a book for programming to a mother and baby toys to a software engineer. So, you might show baby toys to a software engineer as long as he is a father or mother, uh, but, but you will not show a baby toy to a software engineer. But so, a mother or father irrespective of its of his prof or her profession. So, so, programming language will show you to a programming language uh, languages books you will show to a software engineer. So, in other words you have to have a good fit of whatever you are recommending and whoever is the recipient of the recommendation. And do not recommend items uh, users already knows or would find anyway. So, see we are doing incremental sales this is something that is very very important when you are doing. So, it this anyway recommendation engine will require a little bit of calculation. The more you can reduce the calculation the better because it in often case in e-commerce firms there are lots of products probably how many probably millions or, or, or if not millions lakhs of products that are there in the e-commerce firm listed. Now, if I have to create some kind of matrix similarity and etcetera for 1 lakh products that becomes a very difficult calculation lots of not difficult I would say very time taking calculation heavy job. Now, I have to find out ways to reduce that heavy job as simple as that if I and because that is costly. So, any calculation see when it is 1 million by 1 million matrix you are calculating that will take a huge space in your uh, in whatever server or whatever uh, whatever you are doing the calculations that will take more time also. So, 1 million so 10 to the power 6 into 10 to the power 6 that means 10 to the power 12 cells you have to calculate. So, that will also take lots of time. So, time and resources costs money as simple as that. So, if it costs money it is better to find out ways to reduce that cost. So, I will only incur cost when that incremental benefit the marginal benefit of this recommendation is pretty high. If you anyway buy it, so I will not recommend anything which you anyway, anyway buy and I will not recommend anything which will you never buy. So, these are the two things fit is important because you will never otherwise you will never buy. For example, a mother I will uh, recommend him uh, I will not recommend him let us say uh, something which is related to uh, let us say yeah programming titles or books or or, uh, or uh, probably uh, uh, probably items which she cannot use right now. Uh, I will not not recommend them those kind of stuff uh, for example, a pregnant lady you find out a pregnant lady will you uh, will you recommend probably uh, anti uh, pregnancy pills or let us say uh, some some pregnancy test to that pregnant lady when you know that this, this person is already pregnant for, for a long period of time probably that will not be needed, but you will probably uh, recommend baby toys not baby toys, but probably books which is related to babies upbringing you can recommend like uh, folic acid uh, or, or different kind of medications which helps her in, in keeping things ok and etcetera. So, those kind of stuff you will recommend. So, you have to find out products which are fit to this particular person who is getting the recommendation that is number one. Number two is you will not recommend such kind of products which you will anyway buy you, you do not have to. Uh, so, because if you have to take those kind of products also in the recommendation platform, then you have to also calculate do some calculation for them. Now, that some calculation will give you no result because this person will anyway buy irrespective of the nudge she will buy or she will buy. Now, the nudge will create some cost in your resource in your time allocation and etcetera it will create some cost. So, it will be a basically a loss for you. So, do not recommend ISMs user already knows or find out anyway. 
and expand user's taste without offending or annoying him hard. So, this is also a deeper important decision. So, there is sometime you have to find out that this is also uh, actually associated with the fit case that the I will not uh, recommend something which is very far from the fit, which is which has to be reasonably far. Now, how far you will be allowing is something that is a very crucial decision. What are the challenges? So, huge amount of data I told tens and millions of customers and millions of distinct catalog items. So, if there are millions of products and probably 10 million, 20 million customers, then this becomes a huge calculation and those such a size of calculation becomes problematic. What are the challenges? Results are required to be returned in the real time. So, many many results you have to. So, I will let us say I am seeing a, a website in Amazon and you give me recommendation probably half an hour later that does not work. You have to give me recommendation then and there. So, you have to do all the high end calculation beforehand. So, that at the time of the recommendation it works real time. New customers have limited information that is number thing. So, it requires a little bit of customer purchase data previously. You will you will be giving a, me a good fit only when you know what is fitting for me, what kind of person I am, what I like, what I dislike. If you do not know that information, you cannot recommend. Now, if to get that information, you, ha you have to have be a old customer. I cannot be a new customer because for new customer, those data is not available. Old customers can have a glut of information. So, old customers have sometimes have huge information. You do not know which one to use, which one not to use. A customer data is volatile, customer changes over time. The same customer might be different. So, the same person me let us say before my child was born and after my child was born are two different people. The same person before marriage, after marriage, we say for female there are lots of in a, in a customer segmentation uh, uh, video, I told that women life changes and that is why women's lifestyle, life, not lifestyle, I would say women's life period, life span is a very interesting case for marketers because that changes over time like anything. So, the same woman who is in the adolescent uh, versus who is in let us say in her youth age and then uh, after a mom and probably after the second child and etcetera, the same person changes a lot. So, customer data is volatile, how you can handle that. So, all of these things are challenging which we will try to solve. So, Amazon has created a recommenders engine where Amazon's model that implements the recommendation algorithm and algorithm feature is most recommendation algorithms start by finding a set of similar customers who purchased and rated items and overlap the users purchase and rated items. So, they find out that whether customer A and customer B are similar, how they are similar based on whether they have purchased a similar kind of items or they have given ratings to similar kind of items. So, it might ratings why? Because sometimes you might not have purchased in this platform, but you might have purchased in some other platform. But you have rated means probably you have used that plat product. So, based on that I can give a similarity. And the Amazon's item to item collaborative filtering is focusing on finding similar instead of uh, similar items instead of similar customers. So, I will talk about that what is collaborative filtering and recommendation engine workflow looks like this. The major focus here is personalization. So, what is personalization? Recommendations are instances of personalization software. So, basically this is in the whole world of retail, retail personalization is a topic under which this recommendation comes. Personalization concerns adapting the individual needs, interests and preferences of each user. So, you actually try to adapt with customers needs and the, some of the areas are recommending, filtering or predicting. So, recommending is something that we are focusing on. In the broad domain of marketing, it comes under CRM. And when we focus a little bit more, machine learning can allow learning a user model or profile of a particular user based. On the other hand, the model of profile can be used to recommend items, filter information or predict customer behavior. One of the major thing that we use, I told that Amazon use collaborative filtering. So, what is collaborative filtering? Collaborative filtering requires maintaining a data set of many users ratings of variety items, sometimes rating, sometimes purchase decisions. From a given user, find out similar users through those ratings. So, you have to find out which two users are similar 
and recommend items rated highly by this similar users, but not rated by the current user. So, I will recommend such item which I have not used till now, means I, I will be recommended such items which I have not used till now or not rated till now, but similar customers who are similar to me have rated it pretty high. So, for example, let us say, uh, let us say I, I and one of my friend both like Sarukh Khan and both have seen Kal, Kuch Kuch Hotha, Kalu Naho, DDLJ and etc. This guy has seen, uh, let us say, Mayhuna and I have not seen it. So, when they see that, okay, these th three, four movies I have, this guy has seen and this particular person has seen Mayhuna and I did not see it, he will recommend it to me because both me and that person is similar depending on our tastes, how that comes up based on our past purchase history of Shahrukh Khan movies. Now, I have not seen a Shahrukh Khan movie, he has seen a Shahrukh Khan movie, let us recommend it to him. So, that is the basic crux. Almost all existing commercial recommender using this approach. So, this is the most common approach and that is why we will majorly focus on collaborative filtering. Now, weight all users with respect to similarity with the active user. So, you have to find out that, so I will, the, if there are four guys who are similar to me whose recommendation, whose uh, behavior will be most matched to me. So, after the calculation of similarity, we should also find out that who is active and who is not active. We will majorly focus on the active users purchase behavior and based on that, you will recommend somebody else uh, than the inactive users. And select a subset of users because that we will discuss later, normalize ratings and computer prediction from a weighted combination. For example, let us say, do you think that all, uh, all uh, this when you calculate distance between me and some other user, that distance is measured based on, as I told the purchase ratings or purchase behaviors. Now, do you think that all purchase behavior should be similarly treated? For example, let us say you are thinking about movie recommendations, okay. In Netflix, you are talking about movie recommendations. Now, he also watches one series, I also watched one series, one one, but he has watched pretty high and I watched pretty low. So, in a series, he watched, let us say, Grey's Anatomy is a series, he watched all the season, I watched five seasons and did not watch the rest of the seasons. On the other hand, in case of movies, he watched the full movie, I watched also the full movie. So, in first case, it is, in movies case, it both is one, in, in, in Grey's Anatomy's case, also both is one because I have not considered the how much I have watched, should we give same weightage to these two cases when you are discussing similarity? So, I do not know. So, that is something that is a difficult question. So, when you measure similarity, forget about purchase behaviors data. Let us say two person, you have demographic data about them. Let us say I and one of my friend, I am a male, that person is also male and I am a Bengali and that person is let us say an Odia. Let us assume versus another of my friend, I am male, she is female, but I am Bengali, she is also Bengali. In what kind of situation, which attribute, the gender versus your native, which attribute give becomes more important? When it is food items, probably, let us say Bengali foods, probably Uriya foods are is equally, probably very close to Bengali foods, but still I will say that if it is food item, probably our food habits match based on the native. So, native will get more importance. But let us see if it is apparel, then probably the gender matching is more important rather than the, uh, rather than the so, so the male of Bengal and male of Odisha will probably uh, wear similar kind of product in comparison to male of uh, Bengal and female of Bengal. So, so all I am trying to say that the which attribute you give more weightage depends on the situation that the product purchase situation that you are talking about. So, present items, uh, so normalized ratings and computer prediction form a weighted combination of selected neighbor ratings and present items with highest predicted ratings as recommendations. So, this is something that we are trying to do. Now, how to find out the similarity? There are different ways. One is uh, uh, correlation, this is a very simple formula of correlation. So, Pearson correlation you can find out. We also find use cosine uh, covariance, standard deviation, these are also 
measure. So, this measure will be used to calculate the correlation. I will not go into details, you know what is covariance, what is standard deviation. And then there are other measures like cosine matrix we create, cosine is also a measure, we will talk about that in a different video. And then we created a weighted sum. So, the significance weight is S A U and C A U is the, <coughs> the correlation value and W A U is S A U into C A U. Uh, now, what is SAU? SAU is 1 when m is greater than 50 and m by 50 if m is smaller than 50. So, something like that is what we are trying to create. And for a given active user A, select correlated users to serve as source predictions that is number 1. Standard approach is to use the most similar N users, most similar users based on similarity matrix WAU. So, we whoever is the most similar you find out those people. Alternate approach is to include all users whose similarity weight is above a given threshold. So, if that similarity WAU is above certain cutoff you consider them or you consider the top 50, top 100 whatever. Now, in case of rating prediction how do you predict the rating? Your prediction rating is basically RA plus the weighted sum this is the distance you will see this is the distance of your rating with the all the average ratings and then into the weight divided by the summation of weight. So, this is a formula that we use for rating prediction and there are other collaborative filtering methods for other kind of problems we will talk about that. The basic problems are same for all cases there is a cold start that means there needs to be enough other users already in the system to find a match. Sparsity is also a problem. If there are many items to be recommended, even if there are many users, the user rating matrix is sparse and it is hard to find users that are rated same items. So, that is, so lots of zeros will come in the matrix. First rater cannot recommend an item that has not been previously rated. If an item is very new, it is not only the customer is new will be create a problem, even the item is new will create a problem. So, if the item is new, nobody has rated, nobody has seen it, I do not know whom to recommend. So, that creates sometimes a problem and we will try to solve that. And popularity biases cannot recommend items to someone with unique tastes. So, certain niche products you cannot recommend. So, that is also a problem. To solve the first problem, so to solve this problem, we are at the first rater. Sometimes we do not believe on customers purchase data or rating data we believe on the content of the product. So, let us say a new movie of Shah Rukh Khan has come up. I do not know what is the quality of movie and etcetera, who has seen, who has not seen, whether those who have seen are similar to me or not. I do not know those details because this, net, this particular movie is new in the Netflix platform or whatever platform and then I do not have past purchase data for that particular item. But what I will do is, I will find out which other products have similar content. Now, content can be the, uh, the genre of the movie, can be the time period of the movie, length of the movie I would say, can be the how many heroes, how many heroines, who is the major figure, who is the director, all of these details if you match then that is a content based recommendation. So, recommendations are based on information of the content of items rather than others opinion. So, not based on products ratings, not based on customer purchase data, but based on the content. Uses a machine learning algorithm to induce the profile of the user's preferences from example based on feature description of the content. So, this is straightforward. Some previous examples are newspaper, pro, newspaper items. So, let us say, uh, uh, Siskel and Weber, you can check these papers. What are the advantages? No need of data of other users. So, whatever was the disadvantage of collaborative filtering becomes an advantage here. Able to recommend to users with unique tests. Able, so, we will solve one collaborative filter, uh, one content based model also. Able to recommend new and unpopular items also. So, no first rater problem is there and can provide explanations of recommended items. So, there it is not like somebody else bought that is why you bought which particular feature is actually contributing to this recommendation of this product to you can also be tracked. So, that is content based. What is the disadvantage because content that can be encoded as a meaningful feature user. So, not all content is can be converted to so it is a mathematical calculation it has to be quantitative. 
So, not all content can be converted to quantitative values. User tests must be represented as a learnable function of this content features and unable to exploit quality judgments of other users. So, the judgment, the ratings is not considered here, which is also a disadvantage. So, majorly two recommendation engines that we use collaborative filtering and clusters method. In the next part of the uh, slide, we will discuss about these two methods in a, a little bit depth. I will see you in the next video in terms of discussing about user based collaborative filtering. Thank you.